There's a self-reporting survey called the American Time Use Survey, which our government uh, mainly deploys to try to figure out when people are working and for uh, commuting and things like that. But all adults are sampled for this, including this pool, still over 7 million, of uh, prime age men, 25 to 54 years old, I mean, you know, at the prime of life and at this critical period in the life cycle where they should be uh, forming families and raising children. Uh, of the 7 plus million uh, workforce dropouts, about 10% little over 10% are actually full-time students. They're basically training to get back to work with, uh, with a better job and better wages. And their time use does not look so, uh, so much different from employed men. But when you look at what uh, I guess in Britain is called NEET, N-E-E-T, do you say that also in Australia, neither employed nor in uh, education or training? When you look at that huge group of um, well over 6 million uh, prime age men. Uh, the story they're telling about their lives is uh, really uh, pretty devastating. It's pretty distressing. They report they basically don't do civil society. There's almost no worship, almost no volunteering, almost no charitable work. Um, they've got a lot of time on their hands, but they report doing strangely little help around the home or help with other people at home. What they say that they're doing, John, is they say that they're watching screens. These reports don't tell us what they're watching or what sorts of screens, but about 2,000 hours a year sitting in front of screens watching. Uh, 2,000 hours a year is qualify, would qualify as a pretty good full-time job. Uh, and, and this is, uh, so to speak, their uh, full-time job. Um, what makes this look even more uh, distressing is every so often these surveys ask uh, these uh, male uh, workforce dropouts uh, about other questions. One of the questions asked right before before the pandemic was uh, on the eve of the pandemic uh, was about medication, pain medication. Almost half of these dropouts reported that they were taking pain medication every single day. Uh, not necessarily opioids, but pain medication every single day. So we have this self, uh, self-painted self tableau, uh, not just of spending all day long playing World of Warcraft uh, or Call of Duty, but playing World of Warcraft or Call of Duty stoned. Uh, that's not the way that you get back into the workforce. It may be the way that you uh, prepare yourself for a death of despair, though. No. You chart out in this um, something that's really quite staggering, that, the, 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 that those numbers of, of men who are neither in the workforce nor looking for work uh, is at historically high levels, even compared to what we know of the, the Great Depression years in America. It's an astonishing thing, John, because if you, if you take a look at what the numbers actually reveal... Uh, instead of listening to the happy talk that we hear from uh, uh, Washington or the Fe our Federal Reserve, our central bank, or sometimes happy from Wall talk. Street, <laughs> you, you find out that uh, we're mainly being given numbers that were created by an employment system designed to fight the last war. And the last war, of course, was the Great Depression. So we have a system that's very good at telling about how many jobs there are, very, very good at telling how many people are unemployed. When our labor statistics system was put together, I don't think it would have crossed anybody's mind that a, uh, a prime age man who didn't have a job wouldn't be looking for one. But we've had this slow but really uh, dramatic revolution in the post-war era in the U.S. at any rate, where, as we're speaking uh, this month, uh, the latest jobs uh, reports show that for every prime age man in America who uh, doesn't have work and is looking for work, the technical definition of unemployed, there are over four guys who are neither working nor looking for work. If you're not counting them, you're 
ignoring over four fifths of the problem. And unfortunately, that's the way we've been proceeding. If instead you just look at the work rate, at the employment to population uh, ratio, you find out that the work rate for prime age men in America is lower than it was in 1940 when we started accurately measuring this stuff. Uh, well, back in 1940, we were talking about the tail end of the Great Depression in the USA, and the national unemployment rate was almost 15%. So we have a situation in the United States of America today where prime age men basically are, have uh, Great Depression scale work problems. This is not being hyperbolic. If To be a little bit more tech, technical, if you look at all of the 21st century from year 2000 to the present, the average proportion of men with no paid work is about a point and a half, a percentage point and a half higher than it was in 1940 when we started measuring this. So the 21st century has been kind of like a 1939 scale work problem for men in the USA.